Uh, yeah, so I just want to quickly introduce you to a library that I wrote that I think is kind of neat. It's called EctoWatch. So um, maybe a lot of uh, Elixir Phoenix developers here um, use Ecto and are familiar with this sort of pattern. Um, this is what you might call CUD, uh, create, update, and delete, uh, delete um, as opposed to CRUD, which is create, read, update, and delete. But um, these are the, you're doing a create, you're using a change set, and you're doing a repo insert, update, same kind of the same thing, and you can do a delete as well. Um, these are standard things. This is sort of maybe the sort of thing you would get if you um, generated a controller uh, or whatever in Phoenix. Um, but sometimes you, maybe you want to have reactivity, you want to be able to have your live views elsewhere update whenever something is updated, right? If you, if you have a product that's updated, you want a live view to update to show the newest information or whatever. So one solution I've seen a couple of times is um, you go into those functions and you add some PubSub broadcasts. Um, and this kind of doubles the, the functions um, a bit, but it does the job, right? Um, uh, but it's also a bit like, okay, well, what if sometimes you have like a create product and then you have a create admin product or whatever, right? Then it's, okay, now I have to put the pub subs in both functions and I have to make sure all of my code uses those functions. Um, so this, this is sort of where the, the problems come in. You know, we have more code, um, just doing two things. You know, if you think about in terms of separation of concerns, now you have database stuff and you have pub sub stuff. It's like, well, maybe it's not the greatest. Um, you also have like, uh, kind of whoever's writing the code at that time is going to determine what the pub sub message looks like and that might mean that throughout your application it's going to look one way here and it's going to look another way here um, depending on whether you do create or update or whatever different context maybe you're going to have different standards um, and uh, yeah it just it kind of can can become a mess uh, especially if you're not careful and you're not thinking things through very much um, not not you I'm sure you're all great but um, so on the other thing is also if you have another app, like if your app is working on the database, but then other apps maybe insert rows in the database or update things, you know, you're not going to get those updates even. So enter EctoWatch. Um, EctoWatch just takes a simple idea of creating Postgres triggers, which are these things that they can do anything when you have an insert or a, uh, update or, or delete. Um, and you can run anything, but in this case, we're uh, using PG Notify, which is a Postgres functionality. This is just Postgres, by the way. Sorry. Not sorry. Um, <laughs> so this uses PG Notify in the triggers to send a notification, and then there's a uh, Postgres handler inside of uh, like a process that takes these messages in and um, does cool stuff with them. So, um, and yeah, of course, even if you have another application that's updating the database, you'll, you'll still get those updates because this is all coming from the database. Um, so the way it works, you go into your, like your application uh, supervisor tree, for example, and you can basically specify, you know, you can start with a simple configuration. You say, I want to know when the insert, update, delete uh, on certain record or on certain schemas happens. And then it basically creates a supervision tree there with those uh, process watchers. And then it will just do pub subs for you. Um, so what that looks like, or then, so then you might have a live view, for example, and you can then say, okay, I want to subscribe to those things, so maybe in your mount, um, but it could be anything, it could be channel, handler, it could be uh, something where you want to send out emails, you have some gen server that sends out emails or something like that. Um, so you can subscribe, and then uh, you handle info in the same way you'd handle, you know, any sort of message or, or pub sub, um, but it's in a sort of standard format. Um, that's hopefully nice and agreeable. It sends an ID by default, um, and so you can look up the, the objects and then do whatever you want with them. Um, and in this case, we're updating a live view, um, a live view page. Um, but you can get more complicated. You can say which columns you want to trigger on. You could say what extra columns you want to send in your messages. Um, usually you want to stick to like association uh, columns because there's a limit in PG Notify of how much data it can send, so just be careful with that. Um, and then you can subscribe to uh, all updates, you can subscribe to particular IDs, or you can subscribe to association columns so that it, you can get all of the uh, comments for a blog post, for example, by, by its ID, in case you're you know, just showing that in your live view and you wanna get just those, those notifications. Um, yeah, and there's a bit more to it. Um, I think uh, the, the hex docs are pretty thorough, so check it out. Thank you. <laughs>